I would like now to invite our speakers, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency Mr. Paul Kagame, the Secretary General, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, the President of the General Assembly, Her Excellency Ms. Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garcés, Mrs. Esther Mujuao Kaina, genocide survivor, co-founder of the Association of Widows of April's Genocide, and our keynote speaker today, and the Reverend Marcel Wineza, Jesuit priest and survivor of the genocide, to each light a candle in honor of the victims of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. Ladies and gentlemen in the audience, I would like to ask those of you in possession of the LED candles to switch them on concurrently with the candle lighting in front of you. Thank you. We will now observe a minute of silence in honor of the victims of the genocide. May I request you all to please rise. Thank you. Please take your seats. May I ask you to leave your lights illuminated and place them on the ledge of your desk. And I am now invite, honored to invite our first speaker, His Excellency United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres to make a statement. Your Excellency Paul Kagame, President of Rwanda, your Excellency Maria Fernanda Espinosa, President of the General Assembly, distinguished survivors of the genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored to be with you on this solemn and moving occasion. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. In one of the darkest chapters in recent human history, more than one million people, overwhelmingly Tutsi, but also moderate Hutu and others who opposed the genocide, were systematically killed in less than three months. On this day, we honor those who were murdered and reflect on the sufferings and resilience of those who survived. I would particularly like to acknowledge the presence of our dear guests from Rwanda, Mrs. Esther Mujawayo and Father Marcel Wineza, who survived the genocide and will be sharing their stories with us. Today, we stand in solidarity with the people of Rwanda. But our reflection on the Rwandan genocide must also go beyond one country and one moment in history. We must take a hard look at the present. As we renew our resolve to prevent such atrocities from ever happening again, we are seeing dangerous trends of rising xenophobia, racism and intolerance in many parts of the world. Particularly troubling is the current widespread proliferation of hate speech and incitement to violence, seeing that were very clearly present in Rwanda immediately before the genocide. They are an affront to our values and threaten human rights social stability and peace. The massacre at two mosques in New Zealand a few, years ago, a few weeks ago is just the latest tragedy rooted in such poison. Today's commemoration gives us an opportunity to once again raise our voices against racism, xenophobia and related intolerance, including social and ethnic discrimination, anti-Muslim hatred 
and anti-Semitism. Wherever they occur, these evils should be identified, confronted and stopped to prevent them living as they have in the past to hate crimes and genocide. I call on all political, religious and civil society leaders to reject hate speech and discrimination and to work vigorously to address and mitigate the root causes that undermine social cohesion and create conditions for hatred and intolerance. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the capacity for evil resides in all societies, but so too do the qualities of understanding, kindness, justice and reconciliation. That is one of the profound lessons of the Rwandan experience. The country's recovery is a rightful source of pride and comfort for the people and government of Rwanda. And I would like to commend Rwanda for its exemplary role in the international community. Rwanda is today the fourth largest contributor to UN peacekeeping operations. And it is notable that a nation that has endured the worst atrocities should risk its soldiers to ensure those atrocities cannot happen elsewhere. After having suffered unspeakable gender violence, women now hold 60% of parliamentary seats, another example that Rwanda can share with the world. And Rwanda has also embraced environmental sustainability. As a pioneer in banning single-use plastic bags, it's now one of the cleanest nations on earth. In all, Rwanda's experience holds so many lessons for humanity. From the darkest depths, the country has risen in a quarter century as a pioneer for the sustainable future we all strive for. On this day of commemoration, let us all pledge to work together to build an harmonious future for all people everywhere. This is the best way to honor those who lost their lives so tragically in Rwanda 25 years ago. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary-General. It is now my honor to invite the President of the General Assembly, Her Excellency Ms. Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garcés, to deliver her remarks. Excellency, you have the floor. Your Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, Your Excellency Ms. Valentin Rugabisa, Permanent Representative of Rwanda to the United Nations, Mr. Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Ms. Alison Smell, Under Secretary General for Global Communications, Ms. Esther Mahawayo Kaner, Co founder of the Association of Widows of April's Genocide. Reverend Marcel Uwinesa, Jesuit priest and doctoral candidate at Boston College. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I thank the permanent mission of Rwanda and the UN Department of Global Communications for organizing this ceremony to mark the 25th anniversary of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. Thank you, President Kagame, for being here at this time of solemn reflection for your country and for the world. I speak on behalf of all member states in expressing solidarity with the people of Rwanda. And thank you, Ms. Mohawayo Kiner and Reverend Uwinesa for coming here to share your own stories. Excellencies, in just 100 days, starting on 7 April 1994, more than 800,000 Rwandans were killed, an average of over 8,000 people a day, more than 30 in the time allocated to this very ceremony. The Tutsis were decimated. Those who opposed the genocide, including Hutus, were also targeted and killed. Hundreds and thousands of people were orphaned, widowed, raped, injured, and forcibly displaced. 
the international community watched in horror, but we did not prevent the atrocities. The years that followed so local, national, and international efforts to address the legacy of this tragedy, from peace education initiatives to trials in national courts at the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda and through the Gachacha community justice system. But these years also saw heated discussion about what the international community should have done to prevent the genocide, what it should do in the future as well. Dear friends, I wish we could honor all those who died 25 years ago by claiming victory today over hatred, intolerance, terrorism, and murderous violence. But the stain on our conscience remains. There have been many tragedies since. So as we light candles this morning, let us also rekindle our efforts to realize our promise of never again. Let us condemn all forms and manifestations of the denial of genocide. Let us invest in education to enshrine the lessons of our past in future generations. Let us redouble our efforts to fight hate speech and call out those who dehumanize others. And let us work to put in action our responsibility to prevent by addressing the root causes of conflict, by acting on, on early warning signs such as human rights violations, by supporting the special advisor on the prevention of genocide, and by increasing our efforts to build and sustain peace. Excellencies and friends, we are here today to mourn and to remember, but also to reflect and learn. And there cannot be a greater lesson and inspiration than the resilience, the strength, and creativity of Rwandans, who are an example to us all. Murakotsi, thank you. Thank you, Excellency. I now have the honor to invite our keynote speaker, His Excellency Mr. Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda. Excellency, you have the floor. Excellency Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Excellency Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces, President of the United Nations General Assembly, Excellencies, permanent representatives distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by thanking the organizers of this event and we are happy to be with you today and also thanking you for attending this 15th annual, annual day of reflection. Most especially, I wish to thank the Secretary General and the President of the General Assembly for co-organizing this event with Rwandans and for the important statements we have just heard. Remembrance is an act of honor 
more than a million lives were lost. We honor the victims. We honor the courage of the survivors. And we honor the manner in which Rwandans have come together to rebuild our nation. We honor and thank you all those who have been with Rwanda through these hard times. Remembrance is also an act of prevention. When genocide is dormant, it takes the form of denial and trivialization. Denial is an ideological foundation of genocide. Countering denial is essential for breaking the cycle and preventing any recurrence. In that spirit, the General Assembly voted overwhelmingly last year to adopt the proper terminology, genocide against the Tutsi. I thank member states most sincerely for this measure. Such a clarification should not have been necessary given the irrefutable proof and historical facts of what happened in Rwanda. But the efforts to rewrite history are relentless and increasingly mainstream. The victims of genocide are targeted because of who they are, a distinction fundamental to the definition of genocide itself, both morally and legally. This does not in any way diminish the memory of others who died. Remembrance also serves to help spur the change for the better. There are encouraging signs that lessons are slowly being learned and institutionalized. It helps that we have something to build on. In 1994, three representatives on the United Nations Security Council consistently called for action despite the resistance of more powerful states. They were Ibrahim Gambari, of Nigeria, Colin Keating of New Zealand, and Karo Kovanda of the Czech Republic. The Genocide Convention is now 70 years old. Of the 149 states party, nearly one quarter accessed after April 1994. France, Italy, Luxembourg, Poland, and Switzerland have criminalized denial of the genocide against the Tutsi, and Belgium has announced its intention to do so. Canada and France have designated April 7th as a day of commemoration. We applaud these steps and encourage others to follow suit. Perhaps the most significant advances relate to peacekeeping. With the strong support of the Secretary General and the member states, civilian protection has moved to the heart 
of peacekeeping doctrines. I commend the member states that have already adopted the Kigali principles on the protection of civilians. Of course, what really counts is living by these guidelines in the field. In 1994, the warnings of the United Nations Force Commander General Darrell of Canada fell on deaf ears. In the absence of a protection of civilians mandate, there are limits to what good commanders can achieve. Nevertheless, he stayed and his forces did what they could. Captain Mbai Diang of Senegal helped save countless lives before giving his own. For several years, Rwanda has been among the top five troop contributors to United Nations peacekeeping operations. We intend to maintain this commitment. But, but Rwanda does not only contribute soldiers and police. We come to the task with the values instilled by our tragic history. As a nation, once betrayed by the international community, we are determined to do our part working with others to make things better going forward. To close, I come back again your presence here with us today. It is a gesture of solidarity that we do not take lightly. Once again, thanks to the Secretary General, Madam President of the General Assembly, and all of you here today. Thank you, Your Excellency, for those powerful words. Before we hear from our next speaker, I have the pleasure of introducing a musical interlude by a quintet of musicians from the UN Staff Recreation Council Symphony Orchestra.
Thank you for this beautiful and so solemn note. I now have the honor to invite Mrs. Esther Mujuaya Kaina to share her story with us. Mrs. Mujuaya Kaina is a sociologist, psychotherapist, and a survivor of the genocide. While she survived, she lost most of her immediate family, including her parents, many of her siblings, and her husband. Mrs. Mujuaya Kaina is the author of several books and co-founder of the Association of Widows of April's Genocide that was created in 1994 to help reintegrate genocide widows back into society. Please, you have the floor. Merci beaucoup. <coughs> Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la République du Rwanda. Excellence, Monsieur le Secrétaire Général des Nations Unies. Excellence, Madame la Présidente de l'Assemblée Générale. Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs, Ambassadeurs de vos pays respectifs, chers amis, chers frères et sœurs rwandais, je vous remercie beaucoup pour avoir été si nombreux avec nous aujourd'hui dans un cadre aussi solennel pour commémorer les nôtres. Cependant, je dois vous dire que je suis là avec deux sentiments ambigus. D'abord, c'est très dur pour moi, en tant que rescapé du génocide perpétré contre les Tutsis il y a 25 ans, de me tenir dans ces lieux où on aurait pu décider autrement. Si on avait pris les Tutsis du Rwanda comme des êtres humains qui avaient une valeur, si on avait pris au sérieux la Convention de Genève auparavant, lorsqu'on avait exterminé les Tutsis, les miens seraient là et je ne serais pas ici. Mais de l'autre côté, je suis heureuse d'être ici parce que je suis en vie. On le prend pour acquis, mais quand on a traversé ce que nous avons traversé, être en vie, ce n'est pas aussi évident. Et pour cela, je voudrais remercier quelqu'un. Je voudrais vous remercier, Monsieur le Président. Vous nous avez sauvé la vie. Vous m'avez sauvé la vie avec mes filles. Vous avez sauvé la vie de plusieurs veuves et plusieurs orphelins. Les rescapés qui sont là pour le moment au Rwanda, qui commémorent les leurs, nous vous remercions. Ainsi que l'armée que vous, vous aviez à ce moment, beaucoup sont morts pour que nous nous soyons vivants. Et cela, nous ne l'oublions pas. Je reviens un peu à la, à la photo juillet 1994, lorsque nous nous sommes retrouvés vivantes, vivantes là, je ne suis pas morte, je suis là. Mais qui suis-je quand tous les miens sont tués Qui suis-je quand mon mari est tué qui suis-je quand mon papa et ma maman sont tués Qui suis-je quand ma sœur, ses enfants, son mari, mes oncles, mes neveux, ils sont tous tués Et je suis une parmi des milliers. Et je suis encore heureuse que je suis survivante. Par miracle, je n'ai pas un seul coup de machette. La plupart des rescapés que nous avons aujourd'hui, ils ont été brisés dans leur corps et dans leur âme. Lorsque nous nous sommes retrouvés en tant que veuves, d'abord on ne croyait pas, on croyait toujours être le dernier, on croyait qu'on est le seul ou la seule qui a survécu, parce que c'était quasi impossible de survivre. Et après tu as trouvé une autre amie qui a aussi survécu, une autre qui a survécu, et les histoires qu'on se racontait c'était vraiment des horreurs. Et là, nous avons, Dieu merci, sans le savoir, commencé une association qui nous a sauvé la vie, parce que du coup, de nous retrouver dans cette association des veuves du génocide d'Avril à Vega, du coup nous avons de nouveau une famille. Du coup nous pouvions de nouveau dire d'où nous venons, où nous appartenons. J'allais dire de quel clan nous sommes, des clans des Rwandais. Donc là, ce clan des veuves, ça nous a aidé énormément à être de nouveau vivantes, vivantes. Et pas seulement vivantes, mais mortes dedans. Mais nous avons réalisé très très vite que nous avions 
d'énormes défis à relever. Having organized this and being a priest and after many years of struggle, Secretary General and President, thank you very much for organizing this. In my own name, and hopefully speaking for the name of so many survivors, for this gesture, I forgive you. The genocide architects represent a concerted effort to tear apart the one and social fabric. They wanted to make any normal relationship between the one and Hutu and the Tutsi definitely impossible. Uncles turned against their nephews and nieces, mothers witnessed the relatives murdering their children. Even, especially, some of the mentally sick Tutsi, those we call at the Kerala Psychiatric Hospital were not spared. In fact, when the expatriates came to take their own, they came to that hospital and only took one Italian lady who was mentally sick there but not wanted. And the Tutsis were left and were okay. Countless brave rescuers of Tutsi understood what it means to be Rwanda. For them, whenever we speak of Rwanda, I think of them. And they understood what it means to have common and shared humanity ahead of any ethnic rebels. Many accept to die. Our president mentioned them. We honor them. We honor Prime Minister Agatha Winnie Felicite Sister Felicite Nite Yeka, and already mentioned Senegalese Captain Bai Diani, among many others. The catastrophe of 1994 was born of the racist policy rather than war, as many want to put it across. We have to challenge many deniers who use war as a means to minimize the gravity of the genocide, knowing that all lives matter. But the genocide is no crime like any other. To fight against deniers, hard work and commitment is needed, and we know that puts us out for criticisms, and the United Nations should not fear this. Holocaust survivor and Nobel Prize Peace laureate Ed Faisal said, Genocide denied represents a double kill. The initial murder of the victim is the first death, and then after the physical killing comes the murder of memory. In these past years, the corpus of denial about the killing of Tutsi has grown, multiplying the second death over and over again. Like so many others, I lost my father, I lost two brothers, I lost a sister, I lost my grandmother, aunties, uncles, and cousins. Some were thrown in pizza trains. Some in America will not know what the pizza train is. My grandmother and many others were thrown in the river Nyabarongo to take them back to Ethiopia. Others were raped and are now living in HIV. At the height of the genocide, we left the compound of Kabwai where we work with my cousin Mary and we wanted to drink some water at the well. There we met some youth militia trying to kill and they beat us seriously.
survivors, dear friends. Mr. President, thank you very much for honoring us with your presence here today for this 25th commemoration for Queen Buka 25th here at the United Nations. 25 years ago, this very same month, when the world and the United Nations abandoned Rwanda, it is you, Mr. President, who led the Rwanda Patriotic Army and led the campaign to stop the genocide against the Tutsi. We all heard the testimonies of Esther and Father Winez. And the terrible inheritance of Rwanda was that trust was lost. There was no trust in men. There was no trust possible when indeed neighbors, friends, even family members had turned into killers. The survivors decided to hear the call of the president to give a chance to a common future, to a brighter future. And that is how the rebuilding of Rwanda was made possible. So it is of high historical importance for us to have you here in this very house that let Rwanda down in this very house where Rwanda is alive, bright, is an active uh, participant, active player in the international community. It is truly historical for you who had sought not the campaign to stop the genocide here with us today. The security, safety of all Rwandans is a given today. And the majority of our population is really made of young people who are less than 25 years old. They are the first generation to have experienced uninterrupted peace and security since Rwanda has been independent. So this is just to give a sense of the fact that it is not so long ago that we have experienced peace and security in a target, and that is based on such a solid foundation. And that solid foundation is the social cohesion of Rwanda brought together. <laughs> No, I'm here. I thought you went to Mars or to the moon. No, 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 I'm here. Brother, welcome back. We are happy when you are here. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Are you doing well? Yeah, you finished your meandering? Yeah, I'm going to. Say that again? Excuse me.
Y la te gusta. Estoy trabajando. Sí, sí. No, 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 Pretty on. I took it from the side. Water I got. Yeah. <laughs>